Hi, my name is Mike Moreno and in this video I'll try to demonstrate how to make a fast and simple drum machine with pure data. So let's get started. Okay, so let's start by opening pure data. Now let's go to file, new. I'm gonna change the font here so you guys can see what I'm doing. Then make sure to have your DSP turned on. I'm gonna start with a catch object, which is a um, summing bus for our master output. And I'm going to divide this by five. So it reduces the volume. So we have a bit of headroom for all our drum modules. And so I'm gonna comment this. This is our master output. And let's make a test tone just so we see that, that it works. To send something or a signal to a um, master output, we need to use a uh, throw object and the name of our bus, which is in this case output. There we go. It works. And finally, for the prep work, let's make uh, a let's make in an oscilloscope. So tab right scope. Okay. Here we go. Scope, and I'm going to use um, eight eight two zero, which is around two hundred milliseconds. And there we go. We have our prep work done, master output, and an oscilloscope so we can see what we're doing. Okay, let's start by making the first module, which is the bass drum. The bass drum, in its simple form, it's like this. Okay, so you have a line object, it's a ramp generator that goes through a square root object then being multiplied by a number and then going through a sine wave shaper, which is this, uh, these two objects, okay? So let's hear that, how it sounds. Okay, there we go. It sounds like a kick, all right, like a bass drum. Okay, so let me try to explain what's going on here in its most basic components. So first we have the line object, right? Which is a ramp generator. And this thing goes from zero to one in 200 milliseconds dictated here by this message. So this output is just like a straight line. Okay. Then if we go through a cosine, I mean, sine wave shaper, which is a cosine wave shaper with an offset of 0 0.25. Uh, this one's uh, the sine wave shaper, okay? It will create a single sine wave cycle, which is barely audible, okay? So let's try and hear that at, at least. And we can barely hear, hear it, okay? But what if we decide to multiply this, I mean, the line output by two. Okay, so let's hear that. We hear two sine wave cycles, but now let's multiply this by eight. We start hearing a tone, right? By 20. So that's 20 sine wave cycles in 200 milliseconds. But that still doesn't sound like the bass drum, right? And so what if we use a square root object after our line object? This will create, this will make our ramp no longer be linear. So it's more like a, um, like a logarithmic curve. And so that in change creates a pitch bend, okay? And that's how you make a bass drum using only a line object. 
And then if you want uh, control of the click, just use a low pass object at the end. So you can filter out that, that, um, those high frequencies, right? That's it. That's a simple bass drum in a nutshell. So this is um, a uh, phase distortion, or which equals to a pitch bend. And this one's the pitch, basically. Okay. Okay, on with the next module, which is the snare drum. So I'm going to copy this bang object. I'm going to use trigger bang bang because I'm going to trigger two envelopes. The first one is going to be 100 milliseconds, and I'm using this POW object, which basically uh, changes the slope or the curve of the envelope. So it's no longer linear, it's more like an exponential envelope. That way it, it sounds a bit more snappy. So the snare has two components, right? The drum and the snares. The drum here is going to be simulated by a simple sine wave. And the snares are going to be um, simulated or emulated by a noise generator, okay? And I'm going to change here the decay to 200 milliseconds. Let's sum those signals together and let's throw this into our master output okay it doesn't sound so much like a typical 808 snare so in order to make that uh we we need to filter out some of the frequencies of the white noise using a high pass filter around 3000 hertz and a bandpass filter around 5000 hertz with a Q of 2 or uh, you can experiment with that and there we go that immediately sounds better than what we had earlier and finally if you want like a tone control out of this thing you can always use a low pass filter just to filter out more frequencies this is totally optional, but it can create a bit more control. And you can also change your, your drum tuning here on the oscillator. And that's pretty much it. So this one's the drum, and this one's are the snares, okay? There we go. Okay, so finally, let's make the hi-hat. I'm going to copy this bang. And let's do the same. Let's make a really snappy envelope. And let's use some noise and a high pass, two high pass at, let's say, um, 8,000 8, hertz. And so let's throw this, see if it sounds like a hi hat. Yeah, more or less. The thing is, uh, with the uh, 808 hi-hats or drum machine hi-hats, you are most likely to hear not noise, but just a combination of detuned square waves. Um, but it can be either square waves or some other complex mm, waveform. So let's try doing that. And I'm going to make here a phaser at 350 hertz. I'm going to normalize this by multiplying by two, subtracting by minus one, and copying this, and changing this frequency to, let's say, 800 hertz, and then, and then summing this. Okay, so I'm going to use another high pass. So this will be um, triple, or uh, how much decibels per octave? I, th I think 18. 18 decibels per octave. Okay, so yeah, that sounds more like a actual 808 snare or cowbell. 
Uh, let's see. There we go. You can see that there's just like a bunch of a bunch of uh, peaks there. Then, if we add a bit of noise, it will sound even more like a hi hat. You can add way more oscillators. It's your choice, but I'm trying to keep it simple here. So just like that, you can get a very decent uh, hi-hat uh, sound. And if you change the decay, you obviously get a more open hi-hat sound. There we go. Okay, for last, we're going to make a random rhythm generator. So first, let's copy this toggle and connect it to a metro object. Uh, 100 milliseconds, I think it's good. And random 3. So this random 3 is going to output either 0, 1, or 2, which then we're going to connect to our respective triggers or bangs if we select all of them including our select and hold shift and connect voila we should get this automatically uh patching right intelligent patching And there we go. But that's random, right? Uh, we want like to generate a pattern out of this. So let's make a um, counter by connecting an integer object with a plus one object. So there, it starts counting. And after that, we're going to add a modulo object with the number of steps we want, which is eight or nine or whatever and select zero so every time it resets um its count we're going to reset the seed of a random and so depending on the seed is depending the rhythm we're going to get right so this is rhythm um one six seven eight and you can change the rhythm right And that's it, basically. Uh, so thanks for watching. And this um, this patch is going to be available uh, on the link in this video. Okay. See you later, guys. Happy patching.